Okay, well, I'm making one of my sandwiches before I go to work. It's around a quarter after ten. I go to work for eleven. Um, this rig in here is working very well. As you can see, the frying pan um, slips and slides because the camper isn't exactly level. It's just out of... There we go. We'll turn this off now. We don't need it on anymore. But we'll, I leave this on until the fans go out, because I figure the fans are for cooling the thing. So I'll leave the power on from the power box until the fan goes out. The fa there's a fan in the power box and one in the, in the cooktop. And um, the one in the cooktop, I believe, is the one that's still running. But I'll, I'll let it continue until it shuts itself down, because it's cooling the thing down. Um, I got my cheese. I got my bagels, got my eggs. I'm going to have to buy more eggs and cheese tonight. After work, I'll have to go get more eggs and cheese. But, um, yeah, and that gives me enough money. My working today will give me enough money to make another payment on my truck repairs next week, which is what I'm going to do. <coughs> yeah. Anyway, there it is. The fan's gone out, so I'll turn the power off completely. Um, Alright, I'll pick my egg up. This is always a touchy situation, because I've got to get the egg now from um, point A to point B. I do. There's still some heat here. Gee, it's not really cooked, is it? It's not really cooked. Well, hopefully the heat that's left over here will be enough to cook it. That's kind of gross, really. That's kind of gross, it is. I don't really want to turn it back on. You see, I was at 100% power last night after I recharged it. Now I'm at 91%. And that's after recharging some power banks and recharging both phones. And, um running my little portable air conditioning unit my my um evaporative cooling unit and also toasting a bagel with my old fashioned my old timey toaster here and cooking in a couple eggs so that's not bad that's like nine percent of its of its uh, used up you know so that's not bad anyway here we go. That's pretty much cooked now. Okay. But we'll take it off of here then now. We will. Ooh. There we go. Now I gotta try not to lose my egg. I do. I gotta try not to lose my egg here while I'm doing this. You take it here like this. You gotta have the hands of a surgeon. I've got the hands, well, more like the hands of a crazed serial killer or something but still <laughs> yeah more hands for ripping and tearing than for putting anything back together but still yeah all right now my hands have had a very hard life they have but still they're not as rough as my dad's hands were my dad's hands were rock hard because they were all covered in calluses. And uh, each of my dad's fingers was about that big <laughs> across. It was about that wide, each of his fingers was. He had a set of mitts on him like, a, like baseball gloves, you know. And, um, yeah, and if he give you a cuff across the head, I'll tell you, he'd knock you out with one friggin' one one smack would knock you across the room and knock you out and i know that from from experience i actually i actually lived that so i know it and uh, yeah not a man to fool around with anyway but his hands were all built up with calluses and everything and rock hard like they were and and, and really enlarged like they were due to his work because he was a machinist, he was a tool and die maker and an industrial mechanic, and um, he worked with metal, you know, 
And when you work with metal, your hands do take a beating. Very highly skilled. Like, exceptionally highly skilled. Um, after he passed away, one of the bosses at the Brown Shoe Company, where he worked for many years, actually told a relation of mine, and this is really something because they weren't one to give their employees any credit. This was a company that treated its employees really badly and didn't give them any credit. There was a lady I know that worked there, and um, her husband passed away. So she called them up and told them that she wanted, that she was going to need to take a few days off to deal with her husband's funeral and everything, you know. They said no problem. On the morning of her husband's funeral, she got a call from one of the bosses asking, why aren't you at your machine? And she said, well, I thought you knew my husband has passed away and this is actually his funeral today. I'm, I'm getting ready now to go to his funeral. And the guy told her, he said, Ivor, you get in here and get, get onto your machine immediately or don't bother coming in again because you won't have any work here. And yeah, your husband's dead. Well, too bad. You're to be at work. <laughs> you know, this is a work day. So that that's what these people were like anyway. And um, now one of the bosses actually told a relation of mine that they had no idea what they had with my dad until until he was gone. And he told this person, he said, uh, you know, he saved us, literally saved us millions of dollars with the things that he did. But he said we had no idea how valuable he was to us until we no longer had him, you know. And that does make sense because that's what they're like there. They That's what they were like. The company's pretty much gone now, but that's what they were like. Um, they weren't really big on treating their employees kind of, with kindness or appreciating what their employees did for them anyway. There was no value placed on the on the workforce in that company, you know. But anyway, bottom line is, um, my hands are deformed and they're twisted and they're bent and everything and, they're, and they hurt me. A lot of the time they hurt me now too. And it's because I've had a really tough life, you know, and that's how you can tell a lot of the time if a man has had a very tough life, it'll show in his hands you know, but, um, I wouldn't trade any of it, I really wouldn't, um, I figure it's all part of the journey, and I'm grateful for the journey, as hard as it's been, yeah, and Rocky here is one of the compensations of the journey, I have this wonderful little furry companion here who's been such a great friend to me, it's unreal. And also I get to have a nice sandwich before I go to work. So there is that. <coughs> anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have my sandwich now and then I'm going to do the final things I need to do before I go to work, like put my shoes on, for example. If I don't put my shoes on, see my striped socks? If I don't put my shoes on, then I'll be pretty, it'll be pretty strange working all day with no shoes. It will be. Anyway, funny they call our Prime Minister, who I don't like, Sock Boy. Because he's always wearing different unusual socks. So he's got the nickname Sock Boy. Anyway, um, and here I am showing off my socks. <laughs> That'd be about the only thing I have in common with that dweeb, though. I hope. I hope I don't have anything else in common with him. I bet he doesn't like cats. I bet Justin Trudeau hates cats. I wouldn't be surprised anyway. Anyway, there you go. Uh, I'm going to sign off now and have my sandwich. We'll talk to you later.